Hello everyone and thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials. In this quick bit I wanted to go over on how to create some small shape variation and edge breaks ups using Substance Designer. Now this stuff will be very basic, but um, I hope that some people still find it useful. So if you are just jumping into Substance Designer, this is a great way to just uh, learn how to just break up some edges. Now we're gonna get started with probably like one of the most famous ones, which is the Slope Blur Grayscale. Over here, I have some very simple uh, crack-like edges, as you can see. Uh, you, if you want to know more about this, this technique, there is a video of this on my YouTube channel. And in here, basically, there are a few ways that we can break this up. The first one that we are going to do is would be to create like little chips out of our edges to really break them up. For this, if you press space and you type in slope, you can get you can get the slope blur grayscale. Now the cool thing about this node is that you can input any type of gradient. Now for the edge chips, most people often use the moisture noise, but I wanted to just show you like a few one. I wanted to show you the moisture noise, I wanted to show you the pearly noise, and I wanted to show you the crystals. Those are the three that I most of the time use. Sometimes I also use the clouds too, but that one is a little bit messy sometimes. So what does this do? If you plug in the noise into your slope, like the moisture noise, now it will just completely break everything, but that's normal. What you always want to do, the default settings would be to set samples all the way up, intensity all the way down, and your mode to minimum. I will tell you what these modes mean, but first I want to just play around with the intensity. This stuff is very sensitive. You can see that if I just give it like a tiny 0.2, you can see that it's already breaking up quite a bit. So let's type in 0.1. And here you can see that it just breaks up these edges. So what do these modes do? If you say minimum, it will just cut out of the white pieces and it will just ignore the black pieces. If you do maximum, it will, do the, it will simply do the opposite. So it will cut out of the black pieces. And if you do blur, it will basically try to do both. That's why I always go for minimum because I most of the time want to keep these edges intact. Now, of course, we have intensity and the samples. Uh, the samples just basically make sure like how many samples there are to sample this note. <laughs> so yeah, basically the note is a little bit expensive. That's why sometimes it would be nice to just like tone down the samples until you can start seeing a difference. And that would most of the time optimize your note quite a bit. But yeah, generally this is like a nice way to break up these edges. As a bonus, and this works for everything... These edges, it breaks up these edges, yes, but it does it all over the place. So what you can often do is you can often very simply blend your original with the one with the edges. And you can blend it using, for example, like a grunge map. Let's say grunge map 001. And I would like change the seed, change my balance a little bit. Maybe my contrast. Here we go. So white means that it will have the broken edges. And then I plug this into my opacity mask. So now you can see that it will basically blend between these edges. Of course, you can use whatever mask you want. But this is just like a general idea of it. Now, what I wanted to show you is another cool trick. So these edges are often very small and they are very crisp. Something that I often do is I add a transform node to my moisture noise. And I set this to X2. What this will do is it will just scale everything up by 2. And as you can see, it will make the damages a little bit bigger. One problem with this, if you press space, is that it often tends to break here. You can see that it tends to break the tiling. If you have that, simply select a node and add a node that is called Make It Tile Photo Grayscale. You always need to do this anyway, whenever you are upscaling a noise, unless you cannot see the difference. Because here you can see the difference. With an upscaled noise, it's not tileable. But as soon as I draw on the note, it is tileable. And the note works really well with noises. So that's like one. Now, next to this, you also have, if I just um, move this out of the way, you also have your pearly noise. Your pearly noise gives like really large, these type of details. It will give really large slopes, basically, which can also be very nice. And the cool thing about the pearly noise is that you can change the scaling. So I can go from very large slopes all the way to like very small slopes. So this is another one that you can use to very often just give like some variation. And you can already see that this starts to look like it is uh, like stone almost. Like they are stones. So that's another one that I just want to show you. Now the 
crystals will give you a little bit of like a sharper effect, as you can see. Which can be nice in certain situations where you want to just have like really sharp cuts. Then you would like have the crystals. And then you would like set the mode to like 0 0.03 or something. And then you can often get like very, very sharp looking cuts. This can be handy for chips. And then the clouds one. Uh, it's just again noise. If I set this to 0 0.1. See the clouds, or the, sorry, the clouds two is also like a different type of noise. So it's quite similar to the moisture noise, but the moisture noise is often a little bit sharper. So those are just like a few of the noises that I wanted to show you. Now I wanted to show you another technique. This technique is called the multidirectional warp technique. And when I say it is called like this, I mean that I call it like this. There, it doesn't have an actual name. But let's go over here and I can show you. If you press space and type in a multidirectional warp grayscale, this note is quite new. I think it has been here since uh, Substance Designer 2020, something like that. So before we went, so before we went over from like Substance Designer 5, and then at one point we switch over with the version names, and that's when this note got introduced. What you can do with this note is, if I grab, let's grab my clouds two over here. If I input a noise, so it looks a lot like the slow blur in terms of like the inputs, you will get this effect. What it will try to do is it will once again warp your noise. Now you can see over here, you have again the mode. So you can set the mode to minimum. And if you keep the directions to four, you can get like really a lot of split ups, like you can see over here. Now this is a very specific effect. But if you set the direction to one, it will do this, which is really cool. So it literally just warps in, it will warp in one direction, but it will warp around your clouds too. Which in turn makes all of your edges just give, they just give them like the little bumps. And you, if you have watched my tutorials, you might have heard me say quite often that in real life, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfectly straight. Often it is so straight that we cannot see it with a naked eye. But especially with like cracks and everything, they often have these type of effects. So that's another technique. This technique I also used when I was doing my cracks tutorial. Okay, so we've done that. Now I just wanted to show you another one, which is very specific often to wood, for example. And that is the warp technique. So you have a warp and you have a directional warp. The warp, basically, this works well if you want to do like wood grains. Now I'm not going to give you like very specific wood grains because wood is often quite a difficult material to do. But if you, for example, plug in a gradient in the warp, it will try to warp around that gradient. Which as you can see, it, it almost has like a little bit the effect of wood grains, as you can see over here. And then of course you could like work on that. So based upon this, you can like plug this in here, break it up, add some edge damages like we got over here. And just like that, you can very quickly 0 0.03. Here you can very quickly get like broken up wood. And just like that. So as just as like a very, very quick example, of course this looks like shit, but at least you get like an effect of like the wood that if I would plug this into my normal map here, it would just have like this little bit of like a wood grain effect as you can see. But in any case, that is the warp effect. Now you also have an effect that I used to use a lot, but I'm not using too much lately because nowadays I'm using the multi-directional warp, but this is just the directional warp. The directional warp is also very handy. If you plug in once again a noise like your Perlin noise, uh, it basically warps, but it will warp based upon a direction. So I can set the direction I want to warp in. And then I can set my intensity. The one very handy way that I tend to use this is if I want to, for example, have tiles. And I want to break these things up. Because a directional warp, what you can do with it is because it will read gradients. I can literally say, for example, if I have like here, I have like tiles, for example. Here, let me just set this to square. And these are going to be like five by five. Tone down the scale. So I have, for example, these little tiles over here. Now what would happen is that if I blend these two together to a multiply, so let's say we have cracks, then as you can see, all of these cracks, they will basically perfectly transition. You can see better if I set my scaling a bit bigger. 
But this is not logical. This doesn't happen in real life. So that is where this can come in handy. If I just quickly duplicate this, you can make this more optimized. But if I do a luminance random, what I can do with this, I can basically warp based upon every single tile. And when I do this, if I plug this in here, the cracks, if I give them a very large value, like 5000, they will basically warp around every tile, which in turn will give you this effect. Um, sorry, let me just swap these around. Multiply. Here you go. See? So now you can see that these cracks, they no longer transition perfectly. Sometimes they get close, but they will not transition perfectly. And this will just add another level of realism to your meshes. Okay, so we've discussed the warp, directional warp, slow blur, and multi-directional warp. Those are pretty much the main ones that I use if I want to add like some quick damages and other variation. Of course, based upon this, you can just improve things and you can combine them to get really interesting effects. And on top of that, you can always blend your original like grunges and everything just to break everything up even more. So that was about it. Quick and easy, just showing you a few techniques on how I break up my edges. So I hope you found this useful. I have much more in-depth full material tutorials and the link to these are down into the description. And of course, if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and to give the like. And I hope to see you next time.